Hi, my name is Mike and I am one of the in-house education consultants here at The Profs. Um, my specialty mainly lies in mathematics and its applications, but because of the fact that I've worked with so many uh, different students getting onto computer science degrees, both undergraduate and postgraduate, I have the privilege today of ranking through a list of different universities and answering the question, or in answering the question, what university is best to go to for an undergraduate computer science degree, which is a really, really tough question. Now, it's not possible for me to be able to get over 100 different universities to be able to rank between. That's a, basically how many, roughly speaking, um, universities we have in the UK. So we're only looking maybe at about 20-ish universities today um, in terms of ranking them. But without further ado, let's get on to ranking universities. So, as you can see here, um, I have got a selection of different universities on Tier Maker, and just like with the maths video, um, or the maths video, so to speak, um, if you want to go see how we ranked those, we had S, A tier, B tier, C tier, and D tier universities. Um, just like with the last video, none of these universities are bad choices to go to uh, study computer science. They're all good universities to go to study computer science. Um, it may end up being, though, that some of the universities higher up in our list are a little bit more prestigious, a little bit more difficult to get into, and the courses are a bit more rigorous, um, but has really, really amazing reputation and amazing employability prospects. Whilst if you go all the way down to rank C and D, um, these are usually universities that are a little bit easier to get into and more people perhaps here might either use one of these universities to platform to another university for postgraduate um, or postgraduate education or research, or they go straight into um, maybe uh, a different type of job that is a little bit less specialized. Um, and the reason why I mentioned that is because everyone basically needs a computer scientist of some sort these days. Um, it's impossible to be able to go into a company or business without having the support of the computer scientists around in some you know way or another so it's a really really good choice of subject if you're hoping to study it at university starting with the s tier ones there are um you know a few obvious universities i have to put down i have to put down oxford and cambridge um and i'm going to put those down immediately um so obviously these two universities are really, really strong. Um, they both require, you know, really, really strong performances on admissions tests like the TMUA or the CSAT, um, depending on what college you're going for, if you're going for Cambridge. Uh, for Oxford, it would be the MAT. Um, and then of course, an interview comes with that. Um, and they are sort of worldwide renowned in terms of uh, not just their ability to be able to um, sort of produce research in computer science as well as um, world-class teaching the subject but they also do that with other subjects too um, so they're both very very big on the sciences hard to choose between them we're going to add a few universities to that list uh, or that tier just because it looks a little bit lonely and I do believe there are a couple, maybe one or two options that you could also put in the S tier that are also really really good we're going to add those right now And there we go. So it's not much of an expansion. We've added Imperial College London to the list and we've also got UCL. Question is why? Well, these universities also require um, different admissions tests. Imperial requires the TMUA, um, but UCL requires the STAT test. Um, and we talk about a few of these admissions tests in other videos. If you want to click on uh, the screen, this link on the screen right now to follow along with one of our videos on this topic. Um, but with all of these ST universities, they're all competitive, they all require at least an A star and two A's at A level or something equivalent in the IB or another post, well, a, not a postgraduate qualification, but in an, a different international qualification equivalent to A levels. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, I'm sure, um, by making that kind of mistake. Um, still really, really good to go to. Um, I highlight UCL in particular, just because it's not as well known, although Imperial's got an amazing computer science department. Um, it's UCL's really, really good when it comes to the study of human-computer interaction. 
and machine learning. Um, and it's Alan Turing Institute is um, something to really, really sort of make as yourself aware of. It's is very, very well renowned as well as as being a way to be able to access with both Imperial and UCL, London's Tech Hub. Um, let's move on to the A tier stuff. Um, and there's very, very little difference between actually these two tiers in terms of how good the universities are. But I can't list every university in a, as an S tier, I'm afraid. So A tiers, here we go. And I believe that is it for my A tiers. I believe I'm going to have a few B tiers that might be close to being an A tier, though. Um, it's, again, not a completely objective list that I'm making here, but things do change very, very regularly year on year. And it is a very subjective look at things. So again, you're allowed to disagree. But the universities have put an A tier here. Um, they still require, you know, really, really high grades and, and at least an A star and two A's. But um, whilst with the S tier ones, an admissions test was compulsory. With these universities in A tier, the um, admissions tests are really sort of a benefit to your application. They're kind of an add-on. They're not um, necessarily compulsory for you to take, it but it does make your application look better, actually, in taking those alongside your applications. Um, Warwick is a really, really nice one to be able to pick out. I actually did help teach in the computer science department as, uh, well, as a teaching assistant. I helped with their logic and verification module uh, for two years in a row. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And having worked in the department, I can say the facilities were absolutely amazing. I've also worked with some students that have applied to do a postgraduate degree in computer science at the University of Edinburgh. And they came from a biology background and they were going in for bioinformatics. So actually they're um, a very inclusive university with some very strong industrial links and huge applications. If you want to be able to get down or, or go into a research oriented role after your degree, because it's important to think about what you're going to do after that degree, these universities are, are very good to go to for different reasons. Let's move on and have a look at our B tier universities. Okay, so these are my B tier universities. Um, again, we are lowering the entry requirements. Most of these really require three A's um, at A level. And I put them on B tier because um, even though, you know, we're lowering in grade boundaries, these still have some incredibly good applications. So for instance, University of Glasgow, it's home to the strong research in vision systems and uh, distributed computing. Um, and it offers flexible honours options, which is, I mean, a huge thing to think about, um, should you um, want to be able to take that route. Uh, looking at other university, um, so Leeds, for instance, um, it's really, really strong in its robotics and natural language processing. And it offers, um, as well as many of the, the other universities on this list, an industrial placement year, which if you are hoping to be able to go into a computer science oriented role, then you need to look competitive and you need to be able to have some work experience already under your belt whilst you're doing your degree. So um, that's why these universities are in this tier. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we have a few more universities on here. It's almost <laughs> a little bit skewed to the bottom end, um, but. The reason why I've done that is because computer science is one of the more um, popular subjects that people go for at university, and it tends to be slightly competitive. Um, a little bit of an emphasis to say, actually, you want to be doing everything you can in your application to stand out, to be able to go to the university that you want to go to. For C tier stuff, we start to see maybe a few Bs in our office. Um, and again, like applications for these places are well, the applications of the subject, the computer science that you learn in these places, lead to some really exciting opportunities. Um, and it's sort of demonstrated on their employability records. I know that the University of Liverpool has a really good employability record. It's very decent with specialisms in uh, virtual reality and computational biology. 
um, which is something that I had the privilege to study actually at the University of Warwick, sort of relating back to the university again. Uh, in my first year uh, at the Centre of Doctoral Training for Real World, or for Mathematics and Real World Systems. I think they have a simpler name now, it's a bit long. Um, but many of these universities in C tier have a lower entry requirement, don't have a, an admissions test that you have to take, and still have very, very strong um, industri industrial applications. Um, we'll pick another example so that universities don't feel left out. Cardiff um, is a really, really good university to go to if you want to go into software engineering and visual analytics. Um, and um, it is actually really, really good at sort of um, hosting, actually. And you'll find this with a lot of different universities, actually. You also would have a look at society opportunities. They host a lot of annual hackathons, uh, quite a lot. They're very, very well organized. Um, just a little bit of inside information. Um, and finally, we're going to get to those details. Not bad universities, but perhaps the easiest universities on the system to be able to get onto. And I'm pretty sure after I place the details on here, we're going to have a few straggler universities that I'm going to place randomly. Well, not randomly, but in slightly different tiers on this list. So let's get the definite details on here out of the way. Okay, I think that is definitely all of the DJ ones that I want to be able to put on here. I'm going to be placing King's College London and Lancaster uh, in slightly different tiers to that. I think they deserve to be a bit higher on this list. Maybe I can make this a little bit more balanced. Um, but the universities at the bottom um, have generally the lowest uh, grade requirements, um, but they still have some really, really good opportunities to be able to get into industry. And again, um, you can study at one of these D tier universities if you wanted to, if you worked really, really hard, if you ended up getting a first at one of these unis, and you were doing a lot of extracurricular around your studies, still getting these top grades, maybe maybe even being one of the best students in your year group, then you, you present a very good profile to be able to do a postgraduate, maybe you're on a higher tier university on this list. Um, but certainly not bad. Let's pick up on a few examples. So Essex, for instance. Um, it's really, again, really, really good for its robotics, but if you want to go into gaming, it's really, really strong on, um, it's game AI, uh, if you want to be able to get into artificial intelligence specialized, um, within that sort of an industry, um, and it has a really high student staff ratio as well, so if you are ever unsure on or anything, there's always going to be somebody around to be able to help you a little bit more, perhaps, than other universities with a lower student to staff ratio perhaps like Oxford or Cambridge, although they do have the supervision and tutorial system that you can make use of. Um, Brunel, um, let's have a look at that one because um, I haven't talked about that one in a while. Um, it offers computing with UX and UI and uh, digital media, um, but it's again more um, sort of industry applied than research led. So it really depends on the direction that you want to be taking um, in terms of how you choose um, to do a degree in computer science of where you want to go. Now, as I said, we've got a couple of stragglers. Um, so I'm going to be uh, placing them on the tiers accordingly. So I reckon Kings, I would say, is uh, quite competitive, but I perhaps would put it on B tier. If I could put it in between A and B, I, I possibly would. I possibly would. Um, just because whilst it is a london-based university it's got access to a lot of sort of technical partnerships um i would not necessarily say it's as competitive to get into kings for computer science as it would be for other um sort of london-based universities and with lancaster i think i would also put that in b tier as as well um for slightly different reasons um again it seems to be on the rise generally i i might it might end up being that maybe in like five to ten years, Lancaster is a bit higher up on the list for me. Um, but I don't necessarily think it's too competitive. Um, but I also think it offers a lot of opportunities to go into both career and research. So those are my rankings uh, for computer science. Obviously, I couldn't rank every university. Very, very sorry about that. I'd be here all day else. But my advice with this, how does it help you with applications? Well, you want to make sure that on your UCAS form, if you are applying as an undergraduate student, you want to make sure that you have 
maybe proportionally one S tier university down, two A's and two B's. If you are on the, if you perhaps are doing really, really well in computer science at the moment, that proportion might shift down so that A tier universities are the most competitive universities that you're looking at. Um, but really check in with your teacher and see how you're doing, get a, a sense of what your predicted grades are. I know obviously UCAS exams are, are really coming up right now, so that might be a good uh, time to really sort of assess, okay, if you know things aren't as good as I would have wanted it to be, what could I be looking at? And bear in mind as well, CT and DT universities are going to be more open to university clearing uh, than the other universities on this list. It's really important that you get to university to study computer science if that is what you want to do first and foremost. The fact that you get into your chosen university is a little bit of a cherry on the cake, right? But for those who are aiming for the highest um, sort of the or the most prestigious uh, universities or highest universities are on our tier list, um, you want to bear in mind you're going to have to be putting a lot of work later on getting ready for those submissions tests on top of your personal statement which the format is new this year with a three question system. And you will also want to prepare to be interviewed um, for a place uh, at your chosen university. So do bear that in mind when you're actually preparing <laughs> to go to university. Um, but that is my tier list. I hope that is in agreement with everyone, but um, I'm not really going to be offended in whatever way whatsoever if there are going to be things that you've disagreed with. Um, but there may be some things that you've agreed with as well on this list. So do make your opinions known in the comments section um, if you have something to say about it or share it with somebody that you know that might be interested in applying to computer science at university. Should you need help in knowing how to get there, um, we have lots of people um, within our company who have gone through the same process of uh, process as you. They've applied to university. They've done their personal statement. They've had their interviews. They've graduated from their degrees. Some of us are even professors. Not me, unfortunately. But <laughs> we come with a wealth of experience in knowing what a good application looks like. So if you are in the stage where you need to apply for university and you don't really know how, then feel free to get in touch with us and we can offer you some advice in terms of how we can help you best. It really, really transforms your application experience with having a tutor. So don't miss out. Now is a really good time to be able to get in contact with us and see what is available to you. If you are also studying computer science at the moment and you need to boost those grades, we also have an amazing tuition team who can help you with that too. But make sure you get in contact with us with the information on screen all of the information in the, in the description so that you can find out all of the details early and that we can maximize your chance of success should you want or use our support. But until we hear from you, um, I want to wish you firstly, best of luck with your application and best of luck with exams if you have them at the moment. So with that being said, um, I hope you have a lovely evening. <laughs> as the sun is going down I'm here just outside of my office window um, and I will hopefully hear from you soon. Take care. Bye bye.